Hey, and uh, welcome back to <clears throat> finalizing the first part of the first day of Israel Mobile Summit. Uh, as uh, for our last speech for the first half of today, uh, let's talk about retaining users in your apps. Well, we all want them, all want that, right? To retain new users coming up. So how to use in-app stories to do so? Well, well, we have the company to share with us the unique way. It's Storyly, and let's welcome speakers from there, Irem and Tomer. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Eugene. Hi. Hi. And do you understand correctly, you're from Turkey? I am from Turkey, yes. Oh, you, you're <laughs> from Turkey. Yes. I'm from Tel Aviv. <laughs> Ah, from Tel Aviv. I don't, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know Israeli, but uh, to Rem, I can say uh, Merabalar. Uh, it <laughs> yeah, yes, it's totally correct. That's perfect. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, I think we all want to know how to use in-game app stories to uh, engage, to retain new users. So I'll pass it over to you and good luck. Thank you, Eugene. Happy to be here. Uh, hello everyone, shalom. Thank you for joining us for this fireside chat today at the Israel Mobile Summit Live. I hope we will have a fruitful session together. Our topic for today is how to retain new users with in-app stories. We will be talking why it's so important for mobile app marketers to try new retention and engagement strategies as part of retaining those new users that they'll probably worked so hard to acquire. So before getting into the details, let me briefly introduce myself and my company for you to better understand why this topic is so important for us. So my name is Tomer and I'm the Director of Business and Partnership Development for Storly in Israel and Europe. Before that, I was the CEO of Meta Group and the owner of Go Mobile Summit. I'm a storyteller with great passion for mobile innovation and creating win-win partnerships with global clients from different verticals. And I have here joining me today, Irem. Hello, Irem. Hi, again. Hi, Irem is a colleague of mine working as an operation director at App Samurai and Storyly for four years now. And before that, she was a brand marketing manager in Unilever and Nestle for six years. Currently, Irem is leading our customer team, which means that on a daily basis, she spends time with mobile app marketers listening to their needs, challenges, and goals, trying to understand how we can solve their issues, tap into their opportunities, and create value together with our three products. And actually, this is what she will be talking about today, what we have learned from those experiences. So we are very lucky to have her with us today. Okay, so just a quick introduction of our company before we move on to the topic of the day. So I'm working for Storly, which is part of the App Samurai group that brings comprehensive approach to mobile growth and touches the life of mobile app marketers at different points of needs and at different stages of their life cycle. Storly is an engagement tool that helps mobile brands to keep their hardly acquired users engaged, active, and loyal. It's actually the first engagement user engagement tool out there that brings familiar experience of mobile native stories into mobile apps, almost without any coding requirement. We did interactive features, automated personalization, product discovery template, interactive video experience, and so on. It serves as an all-inclusive functionality for increasing avenue, uh, average revenue per, per user, lifetime value, and retention while boosting your conversion. So our topic for today is how to retain users. So let's first talk about how we get those users in the first place. From the day of launch, mobile apps have their first challenge as acquiring users for growth. How they can do it? Usually by investing heavily in user acquisition activities. But when you acquire those users, another, and I assume a much more bigger challenge presents itself, how to retain those hardly acquired users in your app. If you cannot keep them, then all of your efforts and investments would be for nothing. So according to a report by Statista, approximately 25% of mobile apps are abandoned after being used only once, said. Shockingly, after 30 days, almost 97% of your users will leave your app without coming back. So considering the severe competition in the mobile app landscape, you need to convince your users that there's something of value in your app for them to stick around. 
Starting from onboarding, you need to emphasize that through the user's journey by bringing value to them every step of the way. By doing that, you're actually trying to ensure that they become loyalists and transform them into ambassadors. Uh, this would certainly will help you with your K factor, which is basically how many additional users to your existing users brings to along to the app, right? So to be able to achieve mobile growth, apps needs to consider the next step after acquisition, which can be challenging for mobile marketers as we know. So at this point, I would like to leave the floor to Irem to talk more about what we have collectively learned and heard from the experts themselves. Irem, would you like to share with us some challenges that marketers of today are facing in the context of engagement and retention? Thank you, Tema, for the great introduction. So as you have said, our company has mobile growth at its core. So such a philosophy requires us to put the experience, the expectations, and the satisfaction of the mobile user into the core of everything that we do. And that's why we produce tools that would empower the mobile marketers of today. And Storyly, which is our latest product, is actually a tool that enables apps to have full screen vertical mobile stories of their own at their own platforms. So the consumers of the content that's shared through Storyly stories are actually mobile users themselves, which makes Storyly a kind of a B2B2C product. And therefore, as you can imagine, at this point, our consideration here is not only the marketer that is creating the content to our dashboard, but also the end user who is consuming that content. And that's the main reason why we need to know the end user by heart, understand their needs, their habits, their preferences, so that we can provide the app marketers which a comprehensive tool that would assist them in their in-app marketing strategies so that they can engage with and retain those users. And in line with that, we have a rigorous research agenda where we conduct interviews with both mobile marketers and end users. Before jumping into end user habits and uh, insights, I think there is one thing that we should note is that engagement may have different meanings for different verticals. Like for, for an e-commerce app, it can be product page views, add to favorite, add to cart, whereas for a content or a news outlet, it can be session duration or article views as important matrix for engagement. But regardless of the vertical, I think we can highlight several insights and challenges that would be valid for all mobile users in all verticals. So let's start with that. I think first thing to mention would be the short attention span. So we are all mobile users, and I think we know this uh, intuitively. We are all bombarded with numerous messages on a daily basis, but our attention span is limited to just mere eight seconds, which is actually less than a goldfish. So the challenge here resides, I mean, when that hardly acquired user opens your app, as the marketer, you have quite a limited time to capture that user's attention and deliver the message that you would like to lend. I think another limitation here that we can mention is the fact that you are limited to a fracture of a screen when we talk about the experience of a user in your app, in your virtual store. So, I mean, we live in a content craze world. As users, mobile users ourselves, we use mobile for ultimate channel of discovery. So users now open the app, not just to take an action, but also to spend some time and explore new stuff that's available for them out there. And that is why we are actually seeing a convergence in between different platforms like discovery and shopping. For instance, shopping apps being uh, shopping platforms, sorry, social platforms like Instagram and TikTok having shopping capabilities. And same thing goes for Amazon-like apps introducing live video shopping in their platform. So still, there is you still have a quite reluctant user in hand when it comes to scrolling down to discover stuff. They only view up to three to five carousels, and which is, I think, quite a limited experience to convince any user to take any desired action in your app. Let it be a purchase, let it be a subscription, or let it be an upgrade. So I think it's quite clear that the marketers of today need that extra layer of content where they can showcase their products, content, or inspiration in a more engaging, fun way so that they can guide their users to explore the app more and take the desired action. And I think this extra layer thing will be something that we would touch upon as we talk more about in-app stories. So moving on, another thing I think we shall highlight is the mobile user of today is also in the desire of having personal connections with the brands and platforms that they interact with. And limiting the targeting capabilities to only age, gender, or location is no longer enough. 
So in an era of hyper-personalization, the mobile users would like to have the power to be able to craft their overall user journey. And to be able to do that, the mobile marketers need to find fun and engaging ways to extract those insights from the, their mobile users so that they can actually know them better and personalize their experience accordingly. But how will the marketers actually create the channel of communication and interaction with the users in the first place? And this brings us to, I think, another challenge, the limitation of currently existing UI elements in the app to deliver any message or attract any attention. I mean, banners, pop-ups, carousels. So most of these elements have their roots in the web which hinders their effectiveness when it comes to the limitation of a fracture of a screen that actually fits into our pockets. And on top of that, they can actually interrupt the user's journey and create a disturbance. And I think this is something that none of us would like to do so, right? I mean, ideally a user's journey in a mobile app should be undisrupted, immersive, and as seamless as possible. At this point, let me just provide you with some interesting facts about the effectiveness of banners. Um, the first ever banner that's been sold was sold by Hotwire to AT&T in 1994. And the conversion rate at that time was a shocking 44%, which means that almost every one out of two people who had seen the banner actually clicked on it. But when we fast forward to today, the conversion rate of banners are less than 1%. So today, mobile users don't even notice any banners in any app. It's not like banners are obsolete, they're still there, they're still present, but uh, as the mobile users of today, we are kind of immune, immune to banners, so we are totally blinded to them. So in a nutshell, I think everything that I have covered about comes out from the mobile ecosystem itself. The ecosystem tells us this. The user journey from onboarding to loyalty has such challenges that are needed to be overcome by marketers to differentiate themselves. And the preference of the end user coming out of these studies are telling us that there is a need for a new, fun, engaging, and innovative way to communicate with these users, improve their overall journey in order to be able to achieve long-term attention and engagement. Wow, thank you, Irene, for that great review on retention challenges. As you said, marketers of today are dealing with short attention span on one side and the necessity to deliver multiple messages on the other. Additionally, they need to make the whole experience uninterrupted, immersive and personalized, so their user will keep coming back to the app again and again, day after day, month and month. So, full screen stories based on voluntary engagement and including interactive stickers can be the ultimate solution for those challenges, as we found out in Storyly. So now, let's focus on why stories to begin with and how they can serve as a solution. So the format itself is born and bred in mobile. Snapchat introduced this full screen vertical format in 2013. Instagram made it global phenomenon in 2016. And now stories are the dominant content sharing and consumption format in mobile. But why are they so addictive? Because we are all end users and we all share and consume stories. So we know intuitively what to do with them. In addition, the hand gesture, the FOMO effect, the fact that you can actually engage with interactives and feel like you're part of community by seeing results immediately. The immersiveness of the experience itself being full screen without any disruption. All of this is telling us that by nature, the story format itself holds tremendous opportunities for marketers of today, and that stories are definitely here to stay. Leaving the floor again to Irem, talk about more about how we can use in-app stories as a retention solution. Thanks, Tamar, for explaining the hype around the format itself and the reasons behind that hype. But let me build up on that and why we thought story as the format of solution. So viewing stories is the number one activity on social apps with 42% user engagement. And we know that 74% of mobile phone users use stories on a weekly basis, and more than 50% of people open branded story content, and 85% actually watches the stories until the very end. So with its dynamic, interactive, and voluntary nature, as you also said, 
uh, stories can actually be the extra layer that the mobile marketers of today are looking for, which we also mentioned before. It's actually the gate that opens up to a whole another world by not occupying that much of a space in the fracture of a screen. And then one, the, once the user opens that gate voluntarily, as the mobile marketer, you can deliver as many messages as you would like to in that full screen format without causing any disruption and also without having no limitations. Therefore, I think we can say that stories can offer a lot of touch points throughout the whole user journey funnel to mobile app marketers today, beginning from onboarding, become, then becoming a loyal user of the app. And of course, as you said, why not do that through integrating the lightweight SDK of Story, right? But let's start talking about this with examples and considering the overall user journey. So the starting point is onboarding, right? And you can actually onboard your users through stories and you can bring this, bring your level of adoption to a whole another level. You can guide a user through, uh, you can guide a user to your app experience by simple step-by-step -step how-to stories. And you can even add the video content element into it, which you could not do uh, before Storyly. So for instance, a great example to that comes from a beloved customer of ours from United Kingdom, a, a iconic high street fashion retailer, New Look. And from the day that they have started using Storyly, they are onboarding their users with a story group called App Guide. And they, can, they actually provide users with short and crisp screen recordings with brief explanatory texts. And on top of that, you may actually get instant feedback for your overall onboarding process through interactive. And here, what New Look does is they ask their respondents at the end of this story group whether they're an app guru now. And guess what? They have 65% response rates to uh, that poll, which means that they actually have the chance to reiterate on their onboarding journey and make it more streamlined based on feedback. So the second step would be discovery, right? So you may enable your users to discover what's new you have to offer in your app through in-app stories a lot more easier and more intuitive. And you know, we talked about this. There is a limit to the number of carousels that you can position in your app, right? And, but when it comes to the extra layer that's provided to you by Story really and Stories, you can actually give multiple messages at the same time in this full screen format without any limitations of the other channels. I think a great example you can also see on the screen comes from Domino's. Uh, so in the time of COVID, Domino's introduced a wallet feature in their app, but it was a challenge for the user to discover this because they come into the app with one purpose in mind, which is to make an order. And the wallet was buried in the other pages of the app, not the main screen. But thanks to the in-app stories, Domino's was actually able to carry the new wallet feature into the main page without any disruption of the user journey. And boom, there was a 20% increase in the activation rate of the wallet feature itself. So I guess the natural next step would be talking about engagement, how you can create that active engagement platform in your app. And I think the answer to that can come from in-app stories with their interactive speakers. So think about it like this, let it be daily trivias, question of the day, poll of the week, or any educational content that you would like to have a multiple choice question and pointing out the right answer, you can just create a habit in your users to visit your app on a daily basis to participate in these trivias. And this would most certainly contribute to your app stickiness matrix. A great example, again, comes to that from a lot, another uh, territory, another vertical and ed educational technology company called Testbook from India. What they did was during Black Friday period, they actually created the quiz and they awarded their uh, respondents who responded the whole overall quiz in the right answers, a golden ticket by completing the overall quiz. I mean, rewarding is always a good idea to motivate learners to complete their goals. And of course the smart move paid off and they increased their response rate up to 60%, which also contributes to their daily active user matrix, retention, and of course app engagement matrix. And of course, not just interactivity, but the full screen canvas itself provides tremendous opportunities for gamification as well. So we have two clients here that I would like to talk about. One is Dolap from Turkey, which is the biggest secondhand outlets e-commerce brand. And second one is Step Tech Go from India, which is a health and fitness community app. So both of them had promotional structures. So they were providing their users with promos, which they can use in their app. So what they took it to the next level by gamification is, they said they would announce one digit from five digit promo code every day for five days consecutively at a certain hour from stories. 
So this made their users visit the app on a five day basis to actually collect that promo code, promo digit to be able to have the full code. And you can imagine that their daily active user, their impression, their reach levels has skyrocketed. And I mean, when they uh, visited the, the app, they actually, of course, engage with other content. So they could discover other content quite easily and make a habit out of it. And I think on top of that, as we talked about more blurry lines in between different verticals, like social apps getting more shopping features and shopping apps getting more social features, vice versa. So I think bringing in the influencer effect can also boost your active engagement. So now you can use stories to get your influencers into your app through interactive video on demand experience. Let's imagine an e-commerce platform where an influencer is talking about a product and immediately to that second, you can put a call to action button or a swipe up. Or if that influencer is asking about the comparison in between two products, you can put a poll and then get the active engagement from the users immediately at that second. So, I mean, moving on, I guess the natural next step would be conversion and retention, right? So as we talked about this, stories makes product discovery a lot easier, no more scroll downs. And on top of that, you have the call to action buttons, swipe ups or icons, and you can name them in a smart manner like buy now, add to cart now, it's limited edition, things like that. And we see this uh, return on conversion quite a lot, especially on our e-commerce clients. For instance, Modernisa, a giant modest apparel fashion brand benefited this, uh, from this quite a lot. So they made product discovery from stories. They put the smart call to action button swipe ups. And immediately this resulted with a 61% uplift in their conversion regarding the clients who used Storyly versus the ones who didn't. And of course, countdowns, like a great sense of urgency instrument to boost up your big campaigns, big, uh, let's say discounts. You can imagine all of our e-commerce platforms has used, has benefited from countdown effects. For instance, New Look has seen a 100% increase in their click rates when they have used countdowns. But it's not just e-commerce, for instance, a e-wallet app from Brazil, which is mobiles, they also use the countdown effect to introduce a new feature of theirs that was only available during Black Friday. So on top of that, I guess uh, we can talk about personalization, which was a, um, a pattern that we see as a demand coming from mobile users, right? So it is possible to customize, hyper-personalize your content through stories as well. And of course, based on the feedback that you receive from stories, you can actually lure that data into Storyly and make your personalization even smarter. A great example here I can provide is about to happen. So we have a client, which is Empico from Poland. It's an audiobook app, and they're planning to do the wrapped version of Spotify on their app with stories. So they're planning to show their users what genres they have consumed with them throughout the whole year, how long they have consumed that audiobook content, so on and so forth, to create a level of bond in between themselves and their community. And of course, on top of that, I guess this will be the last step, which is contributing to the K factor of your app, virality. So all of these stories are all shareable. So whenever you see something that really reflects to you, something that you would like to share with your community, you can click on the share icon and immediately share it at any messaging platform or social media site that you would like to do so, which of course would contribute to the K factor that Tomer talked about, making your users become brand ambassadors for your growth of your app. So I guess in a nutshell, you can make use of stories at every step of a user journey to make it more seamless, more relevant, and as personalized as possible to lure them into being a loyal user. Wow, Yeren, thank you so much for these insightful examples from Poland to Brazil. You really went through all the globe. <laughs> so I'm sure we're going to see uh, uh, so many more inspiration stories from our customers as we proceed with the uh, stories journey. Um, before we conclude, I would like to address one of the most significant issues in terms of retention, which is too many ads interrupting the user experience. And of course, we talked about it uh, in the past. So, however, apps also need to make money. They are mobile businesses and ad revenue is a crucial source for that. So how can they achieve this great user retention rate while also serving ads to the user? The solution is to monetize app stories. When you think about it, they are based voluntary engagement and the user don't get annoyed by them. They are not recognized as ads at first instance because users come across those ads while watching catchy and interactive dynamic stories. 
At Storly, we made it easier for our customers because Storly offers integration with Google AdMob and Ad Manager. So also app monetization is a great way also to establish new commercial partnerships that complement your app core action. So I hope it was a very productive session for all participants. And remember, this is just a teaser to an endless world of stories as an innovative tool with all of its capabilities to orchestrate that growth and retention plan for 2022, which is just around the corner. And speaking on, on the new year, uh, we got some great news, new features coming to Storyly. So just to name a few, we have conditional stories where you would be able to craft the next story to come based on the reply that your user gives in a previous story. So for instance, let's say we see a poll. I said no, Iran said yes as an answer. The next story that we will encounter would be different from, another, from one another. So basically we're talking about personalization in real time. Second would be the open-ended questions where you would be able to empower your users further and create two-way dialogue between them and their favorite brands. As you can imagine, both would increase user engagement and retention. So we hope you would join the rest of the show. You can contact us through the summit channels, meeting rooms and chat, of course. We can answer all of your questions or of course by email. I will be your person of contact to help you discover everything about stories and stories. And Irene will be there for you once you have stories in your app. So thanks again for joining us and we would like to hear your questions in the channel. That's actually it's actually th thank you very much for joining us because that, that, that was some interesting speech over there. Uh, yeah, I would uh, unfortunately we're very tight on schedule schedule today because we will, won't have a Q and A session. But yeah, as uh, as the guy said, please feel free to reach uh, to them in case you have any questions. And uh, Irem Tomer, thanks thanks again for joining us today. Uh, I wish you happy uh, happy upcoming holidays, or uh, should I say, Tomer Shana Tova, right. and uh, Irem <laughs> and Irem uh, Yani Yelin Kutlu also. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yours as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you in 2022. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye.